front court, Landon Lucas is basically their only regular player, again with the absence of Yudoka Azabuki when Carlton Bragg was out. That's exactly right, and remember, that's why Kansas has gone to the small lineup all season long, Josh Jackson at the four. Frank Mason right down the lane to start the game, looking for Landon Lucas, and it's a quick KU turnover. And they had a bundle of turnovers, 21 in all, a season high in their loss Saturday to Iowa State. This is a set play team, a lot of pick and roll, a lot of isolation plays. The guards have been very good this year, Brown and Stokes. Shot clock already winding down to five on this opening possession for Kansas State. A one-do. Can't even get a shot up. So each team with a turnover to start. Bruce Weber in his fifth year here in Manhattan, first two years at Kansas State, couple of 20 win seasons, and the NCAA tournament both years, the last two seasons, collectively, a game under 500. And so at 16 and seven this year, trying to bounce back. And there is the second turnover to start for KU. And both by Frank Mason, not, uh, not characteristic. So now Stokes gives it to Steve Mikalu. Jackson, the floater won't go. Well, nerves early for both teams, been sloppy. One thing that stood out today, they played each other once, and scouting reports both ways, they know each other well. Jackson to Lucas. Points off turnovers, finally gets Kansas on the board. One team yells out a play, Bob. The other bench gets up and yells it out as well. That's how well these two teams know each other? That's right. And you get into the second part of, of the conference play, they not only have played each other once, but they've scouted all the other games they've played in the league. Looks like we've got a timing issue. The clock may have stopped, so John Higgins coming over to the scorer's table. And the one thing Josh Jackson does, among all the things he does well, is pass the ball. And you see Landon Lucas, who, by the way, had 18 rebounds on Saturday. They go along with six points, and he's averaging almost 12 a game in conference play. So at the monitor, we've got John Higgins and Steve Olson checking out the timing issue with Kansas taking the early lead. You know, Kansas State, emblematic, really, of what this year could be in the Big 12. You've got the top three teams that were all in the top 10 this past week and all losing at home to unranked teams. This is a league that has always been dominated. 12 straight years, Kansas has won the league title. But the depth of the league this season, emblematic of Saturday, Deontay Burton with that big dagger three, and Monte Morris had a terrific game. Iowa State ends the 51-game Allen Fieldhouse win streak for KU. Barry Brown helped seal a road win for Kansas State at Baylor. And Bob Huggins' team, well, they got posterized by Devon Dillard and Oklahoma State. Is this another season where we should expect Kansas down the stretch going to run away with the regular season title? I don't or know. could they lose it this year? Yeah, you know, I don't know about run away. Four times in 12 years they have tied for the league title. It's not like they've won it outright every year. They, they dominate in part because they have a great team, great coach, great home court. The miss by Brown creates a scramble. Lucas is tied up with Brown. And the possession arrow will keep it. At this end, and of course, Bill Self, it's been a while. Back in December of 2013, under Bill Self, the Kansas has lost back-to-back -back games. Kamal Stokes, knocks down the three. Only a sophomore out of Baltimore. This kid has been their most consistent player. Bruce Weber over the last half dozen games. Jackson blocked by DJ Johnson. The lob and the finish by Dean Wade. Well, 
slow recovery by Kansas. You have to build your defense and transition from the paint out. Nobody had Wade. Frank Mason forces one. Heads up play by Kamal Stokes to box out Devontae Graham so he didn't go pick up his own pass. Well, he, he could have actually picked it up just as long as he didn't dribble it, but that's a playground thing. He didn't even realize it. Well, watch DJ Johnson. This guy has been a really good player. Bill Self told us today that DJ Johnson is one of the, his favorite players in the league. And then the, the sophomore is hooking up. Remember, two seniors start, but this is a very young Kansas State team. Wade, tough catch, finds Johnson, pulls the foul. Watch DJ Johnson, he's gonna sneak right behind Lucas and a nice pass by Dean Wade. Remember, DJ is still battling foot injuries, Bob. He's a 50-year senior out of St. Louis. He missed 16 months of basketball in the middle of his career. Mason has Johnson caught on a switch. The lob to Landon Lucas. Sets up Mason for three. And he's got it. He has been red hot all season long behind the arc. Second in America shooting the three. Yeah, he's, he's almost, uh, he's well over 50%, Bob. And when he misses a wide open shot, you're as surprised as if Ray Allen missed the shot. That's how good a shooter he's become. Wade for three. Yes. Wishes he had that one back on January 3rd that could have knocked off the Jayhawks and Allen Fieldhouse. Mason will drive. Here comes a wonder. DJ Johnson. That's a brick over Landon Lucas. Johnson makes a defensive play at the other end. Barry Brown cruises in for a pair. Right now for Kansas, too much one-on-one. -on -one. Jackson, yes, plus the foul for Josh Jackson. He'll have a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play. When we get back, off to a great start on Big Monday in Manhattan. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by ESPN. Excited either way, of course, Kansas State, tremendous football under Bill Snyder, and Kansas, the long tradition. K-State, you have to go back to the 50s and 60s when they had some outstanding players and coaches. By the way, it didn't take Bill Self long to go to Carlton Bragg as he is in the game for the first time. Here comes LeGerald Vick on for Josh Jackson. So Carlton Bragg suspended for the last three games in a diversion program for some drug paraphernalia found in his room. And if he is able to steer clear of any trouble for the next six months, his record is clear. Come out, Stokes. Has another three, his second already. You know, Bob, every night in this league, we talk about Frank Mason and Monte Morris, Jawan Evans. There's a new breed coming of younger guards. Stokes is one of them. We're watching him early, and we're watching him grow up. A Kylo, well short. Numbers. The reverse he is there for a one-do. Off the feet for Barry Brown. Remember what Bill Self told us about fatigue. He thought it might play a factor based on the tough games they've had this past week. Another turnover. The follow by a one off the miss by Sneed. Timeout called by Bill Self. We're coming back to Manhattan in 30 seconds.
these seats, these seats aren't just for watching the game. They're for participating in it. Like the exit row on an airplane, sitting here carries great responsibility. Here, my six men and women, every action is a distraction. So when the other team goes to the line, make some noise. Annoy, like your season depends on it. Because it just might. Kansas State has jumped out to a big lead over Kansas. Kansas is coming off that overtime game on Saturday. But boy, these guys have played a lot of minutes lately. Look at how many minutes Frank Mason leads the league in minutes played. He played 41 Saturdays. Svee Mikhailuk played 43 on Saturday. I asked them how they felt today. They all said, my body is straight. But you can already see their energy is not matching that of the Wildcats right now. Yeah, they look like they're asleep to start this game. There's Carlton Bragg sealing inside and getting a layup. But with Bragg suspended for the last three games, Fran, they basically were playing six guys, and they had the overtime game on Saturday. And, and not six against Little Sisters of the Four. They went to Kentucky and won, beat Baylor at home two tough games, and we saw the game Saturday and how much it took out of them. A one-do. A follow inside. Maurice keeps it alive and ends up with Mason. Bragg right down the lane. No one home for K-State. If there's one guy that should have plenty of energy tonight, it's Carlton Bragg, who missed those three games. Uh, Bill Self really made a point today at practice to get Carlton and Bragg involved in the practice and the offense. Three on the way for Stokes. And a foul call. Xavier Sneed bumped Jackson. And watch Bragg, he's going to run right down the middle of the floor. And this is just a breakdown because nobody has him. Isaiah Maurice is, uh, I think he was, he was his man. Now Bragg, Bob, has been practicing, but he was not allowed to sit on the bench. He did not make the trip to Lexington, Kentucky. Interesting to see how his wind is. Let's watch that. Bragg steps back. See, I would run something here for uh, for Johnson to see if I can get him posted on Brad. Ten to shoot. Stokes down the lane. Old school floater. A little too strong. Gets his own miss. And Carlton Bragg corrals it to Mason. Mason blocked. A one do. Was able to throw it out of bounds. Well, you know what Frank Mason likes to do. He throws his body into the defender. The referee did not bite. Thursday night, it's a terrific rivalry week. Doubleheader on ESPN. It starts with game one between North Carolina and Duke this season. That at 8 p.m. Then a blockbuster in the Pac-12 between Oregon and UCLA. Both Sonic blockbusters. Also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. And if you haven't seen Lonzo Ball yet because you've been worried about football, he is a dynamic player who's transformed UCLA. Oregon, one of the hottest teams in the country, has won 19 out of 20. Mason spins way off the mark again. But Gerald Vick. Saved by Johnson. Off Langdon Lucas. Kansas State off to a great start. When they played in Allen Fieldhouse, it went right down to the buzzer. Controversial finish will show you with Fima Kylo. More rushing yards than KU football. That's a pretty good one, Holly Rowe. Obviously, there was a, a period of time this week where Svi had to get ready for some abuse he knew he'd take. That's right. And, you know, Svi Tyler, to his credit, he has admitted publicly that he knows he walked, but the refs didn't call it. He knew that he was going to suffer some abuse coming in this building tonight. And when he ran out onto the court for the first time and got booed and saw the signs, he had such a cute little smile on his face like, yep, I knew this was coming. I just have to withstand it. We did ask Bruce Weber how he handled that tough loss with his team. He said, look, I told them we had a shot right before that. We could have and should have made. We're not going to hang our hats on the referees. we got to control what we can. It's probably the right way to handle it. Yeah, I think so. But by the way, Holly, no signs in Ukrainian. 
I wish they were a little more creative. <laughs> Johnson. Good. Off the glass to extend to a double-digit lead again. Bill Self, ironically enough, wanted to travel right there, but he didn't get it. See, I would go into Johnson and see if I could get Lucas and Bragg in foul trouble. Jackson, nice up fake. Bob, one thing Bill Self has done with Josh Jackson, that four spot, that power forward spot, is so good for him because look who's, look who's guarding him. It's usually a bigger guy. He plays downhill so well, and Bill Self creates it. Stokes draws the foul on Landon Lucas. That's his first. Wesley Awundu back in for K-State, replacing Kamau Stokes. Quick trigger, air ball. John Higgins originally said it belonged to Kansas, and then turned around and reversed his own call, gives it back to K-State. Looks like V. Kai Luke hit it out last. These officials, I, we need to replay sometimes. They have to make the bang bang call. They don't always get them right. But Gerald Vick with a foul. Team foul number three for Kansas. Now Wesley a one to a senior now out of Houston, one of the most versatile players in the Big 12. Losing it and finding it again, Corby Irvin. And then a foul called on Josh Jackson. That's his first. Uh -oh. Jackson jumps the passing lane. He'll sail in and throw it down. Kansas down by six now, as Jackson's off to a good start. Aren't many better defenders in that freshman class than Josh Jackson. We've seen him run through that passing lane all season. Kansas settling in, Bob. The defense is tightened up. No more breakdowns. Wade lost it, found it again. And Jackson able to tap it to Lucas. Mason pulls up. Got it! Frank Mason had a sloppy start. Yeah, Already with a couple of turnovers, but now hits a three. And Bruce Weber. Green in the NBA is so big in that league right now. And Jackson, as a four-man in college, is perfect for that, Bob. He can rebound, he can rip and run, make plays in the open court. He can drive it to the basket, and his outside shooting improving weekly. Kamau Stokes back on the floor for K-State. Shot clock down to six. Johnson maneuvering in the post, comes up way short. Wade gathers, lays it in with one on the timer. And just muscled Jackson out of the way. Remember, Wade had 20 in the first meeting. Sophomore from St. John, Kansas. When he gets to double figures, Kansas State is 10 and 2 this season. I thought at times last year he didn't realize how good he was. Jackson that mismatch. Went right around him but missed with the left hand. LeGerald Vick, though, keeps it alive to Mason. Makailu, wide open. And you talk about two guys who've become great shooters this year. Mason and Mikhailuk, their numbers have skyrocketed. A 
Again, Kansas State taking the shot clock down. Wade has it slapped away by Makai Luke's. Going to have to force one up. Can't get it to go. Landon Lucas walls his man off inside and draws the foul on DJ Johnson. That's his first. Just the game we expected. Two point difference early between Kansas State and Kansas. It is rivalry week in the Big 12. Bob Shoes and Fran for Schiller. Holly Rowe back in Manhattan. All right, Fran, that first matchup this year between Carolina and Duke, you expect to learn what Thursday night? Whether, well, Coach K is back, second game, but whether Duke can beat Carolina playing small ball. I think Duke's best lineup is Jefferson at the five, Tatum at the four, and then that plethora of outstanding guards led by Kennard. Carolina's got the advantage size inside right now. Mason, short. Wesley Awundu shows up everywhere in the box score, doesn't he? Grabs yep. another rebound there. Yep, and he, he can play point guard, which he has done on a lot of occasions, and it takes pressure off those sophomore guards. Brown, off the mark from three, chased down by Dean Wade. He'll line up a triple. He's in double figures already. That's the second time in the last minute and a half, Josh Jackson just fell down, and Wade took advantage. And Lucas muscles it up. Shut down by Johnson. Graham finds Makai Luke. Nice one touch to Mason. That's off the mark. I'll tell you what I've learned so far in this game. DJ Johnson's going to be hard to score on. A one do that close to laying one in. Another Aaron pass intended for Landon Lucas, but Kamal Stokes was on the baseline. Holly? Dean Wade is having a terrific game in the first half. Ten points already. This young man is from a tiny, tiny town in Kansas, which bodes well in this Sunflower Showdown. It's called St. John. There's a 1,300 people in his hometown. I looked up pictures today, and boy, is it tiny. Fran, you found out the nearest McDonald's is still 25 minutes away, so it means the world to him to show up big in this rivalry matchup. Got to go all the way to Great Bend, Holly, to get that uh, Nick Flurry in the Big Mac. <laughs> but he does it, or he did it when he was in high school, he told me. Well, he got noticed. He was still the Gatorade Player of the Year as Fick goes down the lane off the feed from Carlton Bragg. Hey, the guy with the most energy tonight so far for Kansas has been Carlton Bragg. Brown fades to the corner. Makai Luke taps it to Mason. Frank Mason, coast to coast. Now there's that great speed. Frank Mason's off to a slow start, Bob. Although he does have eight points, but that time you saw him in the open court at his best. A wonder will drive it. Soft off the glass, plus the foul, nope. John Higgins waves off the basket. A foul on Makai Luke on the floor. Hey, Bob, when we watched practice today, Bill Self ran through the offense. Everything was run for Carlton Bragg to get his timing back because he hasn't been with the team. You saw the great pass right there. Smart cut by Legero Vick. And this team knows it's tough really well, but they wanted to get Bragg back on, back on, in sync with his teammates. Easier for a big man or a guard? to get back in the flow of things after a three-game absence. I think a big guy, because he doesn't have to do as many things. He's usually occupied near the basket. Devontae Graham off the Stokes miss. Sets up Vic for three. Way short. Hustle play made by DJ Johnson. In that last possession, Bob, Frank Mason didn't go anywhere near midcourt. He waited in the backcourt. You can see him suck and win. In and out for a wonder. Palming the ball calls 
on Devontae Graham. Fifth Kansas turnover in the first half. Rivalry week rolls on tomorrow night on ESPN, an SEC Big Ten doubleheader at 7 Eastern. Malik Monk in Kentucky hosting LSU, and then it's off to Ann Arbor for a series that goes back to 1909. Michigan State, Michigan. Super Tuesday, ESPN. It'll be streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN as well. And predictably, I guess, Frank Mason tops in minutes in yeah. the Big 12, but as you said, Fran, showing some fatigue on the bench well, for now. Bill Self saw what we saw right here because we're right next to Bill, and Frank didn't even come over midcourt in that last possession. Obviously, you can time this substitution for Frank Mason as we're about to hit the under four-minute media timeout. Drag nice down the lane off the feed from Devontae Graham. We always say this about pick and roll. The reason it's effective is it creates indecision by the two defenders at the point of the screen. That time Graham drew two to him, and Bragg was wide open. Indecision. First Kansas lead since the opening bucket of the game. Awundu gives the lead right back to K-State. Young man played on an AAU team with Jonathan Motley, the best big man in the, the Big 12, and the Harrison Twins who played at Kentucky. He's had a good four-year career. Jackson goes right around Wade, and the foul. Josh Jackson. How about that hang time? Jack Jackson makes the play. Watch Carlton Bragg. He's back. Trying to get out of the doghouse. Good way to do it right there. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. The conclusion of half number one. All right, Rabbi, thanks very much. 22-9 run for the Jayhawks right now after they fell behind by as many as 12. All right, what do you think? Is this the year? As the guys will discuss at halftime that one of these teams can overtake Kansas and win the Big 12 outright? I don't think so. I don't think so either. I don't think so. I think Kansas is not going to lose another home game. Graham hits a three, and it's a four-point lead for KU. When you think about Kansas, every building they go in on the road in this league, they've got a giant bullseye on their back and managed to handle it. Stokes can't answer. Good hustle play, though. They keep it alive by Snead. Stokes gives it up. DJ Johnson will go to the line. Xavier Sneed with a heads-up play to get an extra possession for K-State. Yeah, he's a guy we haven't talked about much tonight, but the freshman from St. Louis, he is a Big 12 athlete, and that steal is indicative of the way he plays. High-energy guy. Bench players this season have 12 double-figure games in total for Kansas State. Snead has 11 of those 12 games. So he's been by far their best player off the bench. Oh, and how about the balance they have? They got six guys averaging eight or more. No team in the Big 12 has that, Bob. And, and only every one of their starters tonight has already scored. Yeah. So that's their balance. Well, there's that mismatch again. But not with Snead. See that? Makai Luke. Pretty move with the left hand. How much better has he gotten this year putting it on the deck and not just relying on that lethal jump shot? It's interesting. If you notice, he almost always goes left, even though he's a righty. Shot clock at five. There it is. Another steal by Josh Jackson. And another easy two. If this guy would make his free throws, Bobby, he'd be averaging about 18 or 19. But the all-around game, we talk about ball and full some of the other good freshmen. The most competitive and maybe one of the most complete freshmen in the country. Brown, short. Tapped around. A one-do. Had it. Jackson takes it away. Saves it to Makai Luke. Another hustle play by Josh Jackson.
Mason leans in. Stokes for three. Yes. That's his third. He was out here yesterday afternoon with the assistant coach Chester Frazier. 45 minutes after practice, knocking those down. Devontae Graham. Rebound to Wundu. I'd slow this down right now and do everything I could not to give Kansas an extra possession. There's about a five-second differential. Pick and roll coming. Awandu uses the pick. Down the lane. Too strong. But a foul call. That'll go against Jackson. That's his second. And I think what did Roger Ayers point down was it a restricted arc block? Because uh, if Jackson was inside that arc, it's automatic. How about Kansas State with only three team fouls in total here in the first half? A one who can't hit at the line. How about this guy at the line, Bob? A thousand points, 500 rebounds, 300 assists, 100 steals. The only player in Kansas State history to accomplish that. Rolando Blackman had a thousand points, 500 rebounds, 300 assists. They just hadn't kept steals yet. Yeah, there we go. That's an official number. So he probably would have been there too. Eight I, seconds to go I in the half. I think so. Here comes Mason. Five seconds to go. Rises up for three. The long rebound corralled by Stokes. And it's a two point game at halftime. Bruce Weber's team at one point led by as many as 12. But as you would expect with Carlton Bragg making a big contribution, Kansas answered. And no surprise there. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach, you trailed by as many as 12 in this first half. How concerned were you about your early energy levels? I thought our energy was fine. I just didn't think we played very well. You know, their best offense was our offense, and that's never a good sign that we turned it over, led to baskets. But we knew they would play with great energy, and we knew they'd play well. They obviously did, and we came back and played better. We just didn't close the half out very good. How do you describe the way Josh Jackson is out here competing in his first uh, rivalry game here in this building? Well, you know, he obviously is a good player, but they're all competing hard. All 10 guys out there competing. Carlton Bragg's return, how do you assess that? Uh, so far, so good. Yeah, everybody's competing hard. Thanks, Coach. Yeah. This season, they are 10 and 2. Now, on the other side, Frank Mason had one of, if not the sloppiest half that he's had so far this year. Already as many field goal attempts he had all day, including overtime on Saturday. Only 3 of 11 from the field. And Holly, surprising that Frank Mason wouldn't look like Frank Mason in the first 20 minutes. Well, that's right. He's come out a little bit slow tonight. Coach Self actually got on him after that game Saturday that he didn't shoot enough. He said he was our most efficient player, but for 3 for 11, I think some of that fatigue is showing with Frank Mason tonight. See so if he can get going in the second half. And we'll see how he responds to the second half, but no questions about the energy level of Josh Jackson tonight. He had some game-changing steals and transition baskets in the first half, and he starts off the second half with a three. And you see the numbers. They keep elevating that three-point shooting and Achilles' heel early in the year. Another three goes down for Kamal Stokes. That's his fourth. Boy, he's shooting that ball effortlessly. Jackson for three again. He's got another. That, man. Oh, my goodness. About 15 NBA scouts tonight. When he adds that jump shot from NBA range, watch out. Stokes, bad shot, looking for a foul. He ends up with the loose ball and gets taken down by Jackson, and Jackson's hurt. Bob, today in practice, he hurt his eye. He had to be taken out, and more importantly, hopefully he's okay. That's his third foul. Take a look now. Really good hustle by Jackson. Almost comes up with it, and then his momentum just rolls into the offensive player, and that's a takedown, but you see the, he gets hit in the eye. Well, 
Well, as you see Bill Calgill, their athletic trainer, looking at Josh, I actually looked at Josh's eye today. That left eye is pretty bloody on the inside of his retina. He said it wasn't bothering him, but guys, it was a pretty hard hit today and shoot around. It just hit it again on his leg, on Kamal's leg. Now we'll see if he can shake it off. Obviously, he's knocking down threes, so he's not having a problem with vision. But that was a shot right across the brow of the nose. Well, and it's not the way you want to get a third foul either. Landed Lucas plus the foul over DJ Johnson. Well, Lucas had been working all night long to get that position. Remember, Johnson protected the rim in the first half, but he seals Johnson up the lane, and they are really good at that, Kansas. They're working on that lay it over the top pass. That's the second foul on DJ Johnson. Only the fifth foul of the night for Kansas State. Kansas now with four guards playing around Lucas. Brown. And a rebound to Landon Lucas, who, by the way, only had 18 rebounds in the overtime game against Iowa State on Saturday. Mason rattles home a two. This is the largest Kansas lead. And it looks like Bruce Weber wants a timeout. Kansas trailed by as many as 12 in the first half, but they have answered since. Their largest lead here in the second half on Big Monday. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Wendy's. Proud sponsor of the 2017 John R. Wooden Player of the Year. It is rivalry week. The Jayhawks have flipped the script from the first half. At one point, Bruce Weber's team had a 12-point lead. But now they find themselves down by nine. Right now, I would post Dean Wade on Vic and see if we could get something inside if you're Kansas State. And there's the mismatch because Jackson's on the bench. Stokes lost it. Lucas saves it. Nice. Mason finds Lucas rolling to the goal, and it's blocked by Wade. Well, same thing on the other end. Wade was guarding Vic on the perimeter, and as Lucas got loose, he came from the weak side, and he went right up and vertical, and a good job by the sophomore. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Coach Weber called that timeout for Kansas, and in the huddle, he said to his guys, you're just letting them do whatever they want. Are we going to fight? DJ Johnson started clapping his hands. All five guys started clapping their hands. Yes, they do want to fight. We're seeing more of that after this timeout. And a foul called as Dean Wade grabs the rebound. Well, at least we, Dean Wade showed some fight during this last sequence. Do you see a difference coming out of the timeout? Not yet, no. I mean, you know, if, if I'm Kansas State right now, one way to have some fight is to pound the ball inside. And it, with this four-guard offense and Vic guarding Wade, I would just go inside to a six-foot-ten player. Well, they do go inside to DJ Johnson, and he scores around the biggest body on the floor for Kansas and Landon Lucas. Yeah, one, one way to play with toughness on the offensive end is go right into the paint, and he has not had a lot of touches in the lane, DJ Johnson. you got two big guys in there. Brown, tough pass for Lucas to handle, and he lost it. Stokes looking for Brown. Trapped under the basket. Stokes wide open three. Way off the mark. Lucas stepped on the end line. Well, check that it goes to Kansas. That's the little post up there by Johnson. He's going to go up and under. Lucas, a very good defender, holds his ground, and a lefty, Johnson, nicely using the right hand. You know, this is a battle that's been going on for five years between Lucas and D.J. Johnson. A lot of respect in there. He needs a few more touches in the paint, Bob, it looks to me. Well, you can see how efficient he's been when he's had that opportunity. 
I just think that's how you play with offensive toughness. Makai Luke, reverse. Bragg missed. Point blank range. Barry Brown's got the basketball, only two points on one of six from the field. He's got him inside now. Wade with five to shoot. Over the top of it. And that might be a goaltend. And an injury to worry about to Carlton Brad. We'll check on his status when we come back. Carlton Bragg missed the last three games because of a suspension, reinstated tonight, and on this last leap came down and appeared to injure his left ankle, was just helped off the floor. He is on his way back to the KU locker room. We'll see if he can return, but with a look at tonight's winning mix brought to you by Shabani Flip. Been a lot of ways tonight, Fran, that Carlton Bragg has impacted this game. Well, his energy, especially in the first half, the passing, scoring at the rim, he definitely has had an impact. And his loss right now, at least temporarily, means Bill Self's front line is even thinner. Josh Jackson has three fouls. We got six, 15 minutes to go. And so they've elected to go small with four guards. Mason off the handoff from the Gerald Vick beautifully executed to extend the lead to seven again. Well, you asked me earlier about who has the advantage. In this case, I love Kansas's speed with the small lineup. Kansas State's got to go inside, especially if Wade can post up. And Holly, what's the story from what you can see with Carlton Bragg? Well, guys, he was injured right in front of me, and as he came down, he really laid over on his front and slammed his hand on the ground. Whatever happened, he was very upset by what he felt in his leg. As Bill Calgill, the athletic trainer, came over to talk to him, he directed him to the outside bone on his left foot. Whatever he felt, he was very upset by that. He has put his own weight, walking on his own weight, into the locker room. I'll see if he can come back. He's been a spark plug. As Vic drives it, that's no good. Bob, I want you to watch Lucas because anytime DJ Johnson has the ball outside, they're not guarding Johnson. So he's the center fielder in this defense right now. And Vic undersized trying to stay with Dean Wade commits the foul. Exactly. And now Johnson, uh, Lucas knows that, so he's going to play off Johnson. And almost play a man and a half on Wade. Well, Josh Jackson, who's played so well so far, sitting down with three fouls because a lot of basketball left. Wade off to Johnson. Orby Irvin trying to keep it alive. Devontae Graham way up in the air, and he's got the rebound. Kai Luke, high off the glass, Landon Lucas, offensive rebound, but Corby Irvin took it away. Barry Brown flips it out to Stokes. And now you got Graham on Wade, but they can't take advantage of it. Stokes around Lucas. The tip follow won't go for Wade. Out to Kansas. Kansas has done a good job the last couple of possessions shrinking the floor. K-State can't find those mismatches. And now Stokes took one off the head, so... He's shaken up. Bruce Weber's looking out to see if he's going to need to substitute Kamal Stokes out. Man, he might have hit his head back there by the cameraman right behind the uh, stanchion. I think he might have hit his head on the cameraman mm -hmm. behind the stanchion. Mason. 
Mason. What a shot by Frank Mason. <laughs> you think he had two eyes on the backboard? Because I don't think he saw the rim. Soft touch. DJ Johnson, deep post position. How many times has he got two feet in the paint tonight where he's caught it and been really effective? That's as deep as you could get it on Landon Lucas. Gerald Vick, who is getting quality minutes in place of Josh Jackson, who's still on the bench with three fouls. He's got four. And I think you'll see Jackson around the 10-minute mark. Johnson goes right at Lucas, and a foul call. Landon Lucas called for his second. Here comes Carlton Bragg back to the Kansas bench for the first time tonight. Dwight Colby will check in. Big minutes for Colby. He's had six different games in league play where he never got off the bench. He didn't play in an overtime game at all against Iowa State on Saturday. That would make it seven, actually. Stokes blocked by Colby. That's a way to make your presence felt. Johnson goes at Colby. Foul called on the floor on Frank Mason on a reach in. That's his second. Holly? Well, Carlton Brad for Kansas just ran out of the locker room, putting good weight and pressure on that left foot. I heard him tell the coaches on the bench, I'm good, put me in. He gave Coach Self the thumbs up. He should be able to re-enter. And here he comes. Although, I guess with 12 minutes and 12 seconds to go, knowing you're going to get the under-12 timeout coming up, Bill Self sent him right back down the bench. Might have been because of that block shot by Dwight Colby, the Ole Miss transfer. Earned himself a at least another yeah. minute or two. Colby's smart. He's just going to back off Johnson. Wade. Yes. Plus the foul for Dean Wade. Gonzo Ball, according to you, Frank Rashilla, right in the mix as well. Good comparison between these two. Different kind of players, obviously. Mason, more of a scorer. Both shoot it at a high rate behind the arc. And, Bob, if you haven't seen Lonzo Ball, you just think of Magic Johnson and Jason Kidd, and that's the type of playmaker he is. Absolutely has transformed UCLA basketball. Of course, if Frank Mason holds on to his current averages, he'll be the first player in the history of the Big 12 to hit 20 points and five assists for a season. And Jackson and Bragg are both back in for KU in a four-point game. Mason with seven to shoot. Hunting is shot. Instead, it's Vic. That's blocked. Good contest by Xavier Sneed. Well, Self wanted the foul, didn't get it. But that possession went too long. How about getting it inside? Wade's posting up Jackson. Tough pass from Johnson. Now it's Irvin from the corner. Jackson lost it. But a kick is called by Roger Ayers, so that keeps it with KU. Good call. Jackson tried to thread the needle. At least for the next couple minutes. Take a look. Let's see what happens here. It hits the lower part of his leg. It's a kick ball. No, it doesn't. It hit his hand, Bob. You see that? There it is. No foot involved. Excuse me. A break for Kansas. Jackson step back three. Barry Brown on the drive. Comes up short. Scramble for it. Carlton Bragg has it. Held ball. It'll stay.
stay with K-State. And now Carlton Bragg gets up unhappy with whatever was going on at the bottom of what looked like a football scrum with a fumble on the deck. That's a rivalry game. This is an important possession. Watch everybody hit the floor right here. That's just good hustle both ways. I like it. It's rivalry week, Bob. But now Stokes back in for K-State. Josh Jackson's got to be a little careful with those three fouls. That's one of those, right now, Bruce Weber is going back to that kickball that they missed. And as an official, you have to say, hey, coach, I missed it. Okay? I missed it. Always felt the best thing an official could do to me is come over and say, coach, I might have missed that one. And while the officials take a look at a clock issue on the monitor, this week's NBA Wednesday doubleheader starts at the Garden with the Knicks hosting the Clippers at 7 Eastern, followed by the Bulls taking on KD Steph and the Warriors at Oracle. Both games on ESPN as well as streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Good doubleheader coming up on Wednesday. this year that foot shuffle is going to be called every time when you come from the basket and you cut away from the basket you've got to get behind the ball before you catch it you can't catch and turn it's harder you will shuffle your feet pretty clean game though as you can see only 15 combined turnovers midway through the second half and not a ton of personal fouls as well A little too strong. And a foul called on Jackson. That's what he cannot do. That's what we talked about. I said, Bob, if you got three and you're playing so well, you got to play conservative for a while. He they thinks Kamal Stokes deserves a little gold statue. But it looked like he reached out. He didn't even and need to be there. Him. Yeah, but he didn't even need to be in the backboard 94 feet away. And now it's a one and one. Bill Self was toying with keeping him on the bench because of that reason. And now we're not likely to see Jackson back for five more minutes or four more minutes. And look at the foul disparity as well. K-State's going to shoot free throws the rest of the way, and they have only committed one team foul so far in the second half. That means without Jackson, I would go inside and play in the paint. Mikhailuk, double team. Devontae Grant knocks down a straightaway three. What makes that a big shot to me is Frank Mason is not on his game. He's had very few poor games this year. And it would really help if Devontae Graham can pick up the slack. You see, you don't have to guard Johnson, so you can double team inside. And watch Devontae Graham. He only had one field goal prior to this three. And Bob, it, it's so ironic, a year ago in February and March, it was Devontae Graham's team. Remember, the most valuable player of the Big 12 tournament. Stokes sets up Brown. Lachero Vick goes up in the air to grab the rebound and draws the foul on D.J. Johnson. That's his third. Well, Lachero Vick averages 
a little over 23 minutes a game. He's already played 21 plus minutes in this game. And you'd think he's going to play a bunch more with Jackson on the bench with four fouls, and he's been good. Absolutely. This is a guy that only played, speaking of minutes, 91 minutes as a freshman. And you talk about the improvement he's made. It's been uh, meteoric at times. So now DJ Johnson sits down with three. Still think there's going to be a part of this game that Mason takes over. Mason throws one to the rim. Bragg couldn't stop his momentum before going out of bounds. Tough play for Mason because he had to throw that ball over good length and he wasn't able to do it. So Lucas comes back in for Carlton Bragg. Wade wants to drive at Lucas. Gives it up to Stokes. Allows the flyby. The putback, no good, but going down to the deck hard and drawing the foul with Xavier Sneak. Yeah, I like this kid. Great energy. Right now, he's an energy player. He's got some skill, too, but only a freshman. Third foul on Landon Lucas. Played on an AAU team with Duke's Jason Tatum. He was sort of the second, third banana. An 80% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Now, when you look at this league, Bob, and we know it well already this year, guys like Sneed and Lamont West of West Virginia, Andrew Jones of Texas, a lot of young stars in that freshman class. Look at that. A wonder with the tip follow off the miss by Steve. I'll tell you what, Kansas State has not played well in the second half, and they're still in this game. They have not hit a, they haven't had a run yet. But Gerald Vick, too strong. Chance for K-State to make it a one-possession game. Awundu leans in. Offensive rebound, Sneed. Gets a return from Stokes. That's short, but he's fouled. Frank Mason fouled Xavier Sneed, shooting a three. Seven and a half minutes to go here at Bramlage. It's Big Monday in the Big 12. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by eBay. Find new, unique, and everything in between on eBay. And this is the beginning of rivalry week as we take a look at Kansas State's BPI heading into tonight's game, powered by Microsoft Cloud. They are 32 in our BPI, but their next four games, rather with obviously already Baylor in the win column, Kansas tonight, then at West Virginia, Iowa State, they play four consecutive games of teams that we at least in our BPI have in the top 25. Absolutely, and that's why tonight's game is so important. They've already beaten Baylor, they've already beaten West Virginia, and they have a chance to upset the number three team in the country. And if you look at that BPI, Bob, eight Big 12 teams in the top 44. First bench points of the game scored by Xavier Sneed for K-State. And if KU loses tonight, this becomes a very interesting race down the stretch in the Big 12. Another free throw coming for Xavier Sneed. Remember, Kansas has West Virginia next Monday night, and they still have to go to Baylor. Of course, 
Baylor and West Virginia a couple of Mondays from now have a head-to-head -head matchup where Baylor gets a chance at revenge in Waco after they got blitzed by West Virginia earlier this season when they went to Morgantown. Watch the post up here. There it is. Lucas catches, gathers, and draws the foul on Dean Wade. Here's what happened on that situation. Because Kamal Stokes is only six feet tall, Graham was able to look over the top of him and throw it to Lucas. The first post defender is the man guarding the basketball. And if you can't put good pressure on that guy, it makes looking over the top a little easier. Second foul on Wade. Kansas is now one for four at the free throw line tonight. to the corner, Sneed steps back. That's no good, offensive rebound, a one do. He's got the layup and it's a one point game. You know, I remember when he was a freshman, he couldn't have muscled fit like that. Once he got it underneath, he just went right through him. Timeout called by Bill Self. Well, we watched Wesley Owundu for four years, the jack of all trades. Watch him just muscle the ball right through Vic, like he's not even there. That's a senior. And DJ Johnson, Corby Irvin said, yes, weight room. size advantage. Obviously with Dean Wade and DJ Johnson, they, without the depth in the front court for KU, have a tough matchup, and tonight they have done work on the offensive glass. And I actually like this smaller lineup with Johnson on the bench. A little more mobile, Snead gives him another perimeter guy. And to Lucas again. Makai Luke on the drive fouled on the drive before the shot by a wonder. If you're Kansas State, Bob, once you see the ball going inside to Lucas, you must get up and pressure the post feeders. Second easy look in the last two possessions. First foul on a one do. And Kansas State still has two more fouls to get. He has it again, can't do that. Lucas with the left hand. So what you got now, if you're Bruce Weber, you have to make the adjustment because it's like Tom Brady sitting in the pocket. They're able to find Lucas really easily. Shot clock at 10 when a one dude finally gives it up. Barry Brown with the shot clock down to five. Crosses over, down the lane, nice. with the left hand. Mason struggling in the backcourt. Graham after it. Taken away. A one do. Offensive foul call. Saw that coming from 10 miles away. Good job by Devontae Graham. He just stayed still. And a one do the senior. Great hustle right here. Watch everybody go to the floor. And you'll see a wonder come up with it. And he's set, Bob. He's set. 
And good so, call in your opinion. Yeah, absolutely, but a one who's a senior, he's got to know that. Josh Jackson with four fouls, back in the game with 5.20 to go. He's got two feet on the floor, facing the driver, and he hasn't left his feet yet, the driver. Easy call. Johnson back, so they may not be able to throw it in as easily now. Shot clock at four. Devontae Graham for three. In and out. Watch Lucas. He's going to play center field. He doesn't have to guard Johnson out there. Dean Wade for the lead. Yes! Strict foul call. Frank Mason goes to the line to try and give KU the lead back. Well, he saw the opening in the middle. He just took it. I think Brown thought a ball screen was coming, and he, I think he peaked. That's the first on Brown, and now K-State is also out of fouls to give. So we shoot free throws the rest of the way. Seventeen for Mason, and it's been a subpar night for him. Just hanging in there. That's a bad angle, Bob. When you pass it into the post, you got to get below the foul line. So Kansas State with a turnover gives it back to KU with the lead coming up on four minutes to go. Let's watch Mason. This could be his time. Josh Jackson draws the foul. We have had some amazing scenes here at Bramlage between these two teams when K-State has pulled off the upset. Dirty, but in real realistic terms, they have added more security in the student section. They've got more security guards in place, and there will be a cordon of security people run out that will go along the scoring table to protect Kansas and Bill Self. You remember a couple years ago, there was a scary incident here. Kansas State's done a lot to try to work with the student government to have more security and have better sportsmanship here in Manhattan. Bob, your first Kansas-Kansas State game in here? Yes. Kansas State wins. Go under the table. I got you covered. I'm glad Holly just showed us how safe that is. Shot clock to 10 for K-State. A one do. Bailed out by Wade. That's way off the mark. Here comes Jackson. Blocked by Wade. Not unexpected because Jackson had to be cautious with the four fouls. See how Jackson babied it up there. Didn't want to run the defender over. Mason uses the screen and connects along two. And John Higgins says, I called it a two, but let's go to the monitor to make sure with 314 to go. Frank Mason, look at him, Bob. We've talked about the fatigue. He's a middleweight fight. He's a middleweight fighter. That looks like his feet are on the line. John Higgins, you see right here, he's taking a look. He has a better look than we do here. Well, Holly, you spoke with Frank Mason earlier today about all the minutes piling up and how that's affected him. Well, you know, I don't know if he's being honest with me, but he did say, my body feels right. I actually feel really good. They do a ton of recovery work. 
um, after their game where he played 41 minutes on Saturday. He's shouldered this load all week. In fact, they only practiced for about 40 minutes yesterday. Just barely got a lather going. Bill Self's been trying to be very smart with their limited depth this week about how much they're practicing. But Frank Mason, if he's telling us the truth, says my body feels right. He's talked about that all season, has Bill Self. Cutting back on practice minutes because you've got Frank Mason and Devontae Graham who are number one and number three in the Big 12 in minutes played. And it is a two confirmed by John Higgins. You know, Fran, when you have a thin bench, how do you try and keep your team sharp by practicing enough but not wearing them out? Fresh legs, Bob. I always felt after February 1st, you've been practicing for seven months, and the first thing you have to do is make sure the bodies are right. And sometimes short practices means just mental stuff and not physical stuff, film and shooting. How much will it show up for both teams in the last three minutes as both came off of emotional games on Saturday? Good matchup here. Jackson on Stokes. Wade in the corner. We are tied. Jackson. Out to Mikhailu. The tie is broken by Spade for three. And it's Wade that's hurt as he is holding his left ankle. DJ Johnson down as well. Boy, two great looks on each end. That's the pass out. You see they just collide. And both players looked over at Bruce Weber and both said, I am staying in this game. Bruce Weber is playing a little D right now out on the court. Stokes. Lucas the rebound. Here comes Josh Jackson. Three on two for Kansas. Mason fouled by a one do. Smart play by Jackson. He's playing with the four fouls. He waited. Mason filled the middle and a good find. That's the third on a one do. He looks like he's in the 15th round of a, of a championship fight. Look at his face. Security standing by just in case there's a court storming, but if Frank Mason has anything to say about it, they're going to stay in that tunnel as he has 20 for the 13th time this season. Brown steps in for two. That's off the mark. I'll tell you what, the last few possessions, Landon Lucas has been tremendous. Jackson swoops in, draws the foul. Well, you thought that Kansas might, with a five-point lead, work with some clock there. Jackson immediately attacked. Well, and I thought this time I knew the defender wasn't set. Take a look. And he gets over there just a little late, doesn't get his whole body in front. And that's the fourth foul on Wesley Awundu. And this is the one Achilles heel for the freshman from Detroit. Likely to be a top five pick in June. And if Kansas is to win this game, Bill Self is going to watch this film the last couple minutes. And Landon Lucas has been subtly the best defender on the court. Watch him in the pick and roll. E.J. Johnson fouled by Lucas. That's Lucas's fourth. That's team foul number 10 on KU. 
So Jackson and Lucas both now with four. And DJ Johnson, 63% so far this year to shoot a pair. Johnson, and after the conclusion of our game, it's Sports Center at night with the two Johns that have all the highlights and breakdowns. College basketball, the NBA, the NHL as well, put a bow on the Super Bowl. Sports Center at night next on ESPN as well as streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Want to use a little clock here? Grant turns it over. Awundu lost the dribble. Frank Mason saves it to Awundu. That's blocked. Oh, A takeaway by Frank Mason. But he lost it. <laughs> All Bill wow. Self can do is smile. <laughs> How about the hustle by Frank Mason? I'm telling you, Bob, I know he's fatigued. He's gone home. Look at this. Oh, the NFL might like that, even though he's likely to play in the NBA. Boy, Frank Mason looks like he needs about a week off after this game. You know, Bill Self did say that his team was going to take a couple of days off, and they need it. I mean, they, they look about as winded as we've seen Kansas they're this not, year. They're not going to play till Saturday because they're playing Big Monday. So this time of year, you got to keep your guys fresh. And he told us today, Tuesday and Wednesday, no basketball. But right now, they've got about a minute two to give it all they got. And I said earlier, Bob, it's not Frank Mason's premier performance. We saw that Saturday night. But how about the hut hustle, the guts, the toughness, the competitiveness? He's had an off night tonight, and he has 20. Over to Holly Rowe. We asked Bill Self today if Frank Mason should be the player of the year. And he said, you know, I don't watch everybody out there, but I have to say my guy is one of the best. He said he has surpassed Jerron Collins as the best guard that has ever played for me. That is high praise. And when I asked Frank Mason today, Frank, should you be the player of the year? Are you the best player in the country? Frank said, no, Holly. We're the best. about Lonzo Ball yeah. and how he may have a different bench to his season because he has taken UCLA's program and kind of reinvigorated it by himself. But Frank Mason, he's just been as important to his team as any player in America. You know, we talked to Bill, Bill Self about this today again, and I, I do think, and he's kind of, he heads all year, I do think he's the best guard or is having the best one season of any guard in the 14 years that Bill Self has coached at Kansas. Now that includes a lot of great players, and particularly Aaron Miles and Sharon Collins. But this kid, Bob, when you think of the great guards in Kansas history, is having a season for the ages. A one do Lost it. Lucas takes it away. Tried to save it. Stepped on the end line. Landon, and I'll tell you, Landon, sorry, Bob, Landon Lucas has been so good the last five minutes, and it's not the rebounding, it's certainly not the points. Stokes double team. DJ e. Johnson lost his balance. Here comes Frank Mason. Draws the foul on Sneed with a four point lead with 43 seconds to go. And that's the second on Sneed. Got three final four officials out there. It's not an easy game to officiate. I think by and large tonight, they missed a few. By and large, an excellent job of maintaining the control of this basketball game. Twenty-one for Frank Mason. Hey, 
Now, this is a kid that signed with Towson State, but he didn't have the grades, Bob. He went to Massanut in the Military Academy, had to get up every morning at 6.30 and march to, 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 to breakfast. It's a five-point game. A gotta, must trip here for K-State. Got to go quick. Foul called on Devontae Graham. The last thing you want to do if you're Bill Self right now is allow Kansas, to, Kansas State to score with the clock stopped. If DJ Johnson makes these free throws and makes this a one possession game, which he does not on the front end, might change the strategy here. Six second differential between shot clock and game clock, but you have to foul, you'd think, in a two possession game, Correct. don't you? Yes, you do. And there's the whistle so they can set up the press. Sneed comes in, Irvin comes in, and yes, Bob, you gotta elongate the game, you gotta stretch the game out. Press, trap, foul immediately. You can't, you can't worry about who you're fouling. See, that's too much time. Graham gets it in the front court. Got a foul. It doesn't matter. Just give a foul. There Brown you go. finally does. Ten seconds total came off the clock. See, in that situation, you, you want to try to foul the worst foul shooter. But good teams like Kansas are going to put the ball in their best free throw shooter's hands. And at some point, you got to foul right away. The time on the clock is more important than who is shooting the free throws. Graham at Needs a three. Got it! Timeout called quickly by Bruce Weber. 19 seconds to go, and it's a one possession game. Yeah, you remember today when, look at these, this is exactly what we saw at the shoot around. Bill Self put his late game defense, and he said, We switch everything. Watch the poor switch by Speed Mikhail Luke. He gives Stokes an easy shot. You're, you're switching at all five spots late in the game, and that's just a poor switch because you allow Stokes to get comfortable on the three-point line, and that's why you saw Bill Self angry at speed. That's the fifth three of the night for Kamal Stokes, and now Kansas State down by only three. Both teams over the 10-foul double bonus limit. Kansas has the arrow. Each team with a timeout left. Now if you're Kansas State. How much of this is trying to get a steal in the backcourt? I mean, you can't wait to foul at all with 19 seconds to go. Time, time is more important than who you foul. So if you can get an immediate trap, you do. And if you could steal it, great. But the likelihood is they're going to put the ball in a good free throw shooter's hands. And you just have to take a chance, play the odds, that, that you can get them to miss at least one. Been since December of 2013 at Kansas has lost back-to-back -back games. Graham's got it. Down to 15 seconds to go. There's the foul, but Corby Irvin thought that he may have gotten a knockaway cleanly. Instead, it will be Devontae Graham to shoot. Okay, so right now you're hoping that he misses both. He's likely not to do that. You hope if he doesn't miss both, he misses one, then it's a four-point game. You still have time to come down, score, set up your press again. Wade and DJ Johnson both back in for K-State. I guarantee you Kansas is going to do a better job of switching out now. And you don't mind giving up the two, but not the three. Oh, 
Kansas by five. Bill Self just yelled, switch five. Stokes creates some space. In and out. Devontae Graham lost it. Johnson's got it. But we're down to three seconds to go. Stokes can't hit the three. The tip follow goes with two tenths of a second to go. And that all but does it. A quick timeout called by K-State, but they'll go to the monitor, I would think, to double check the time. But it's only tenths of a second remaining, and it looks like Kansas is going to get the win here at Bramlage. Yeah, all this time, it took it took way too much time. They finally get the basket. And they get the tip in. You see that ball knocked around? And now, if you're Bill Self, once they put time on the clock, you just got to get it in. But it says a lot about Frank Mason that he is tonight's player of the game brought to you by Phillips 66. 21 points. So if you're Bill Self, you can throw the ball down the floor or you can throw it in inside. You can throw it inside the three-point line right here. Actually, where Kansas' basket is. This will be interesting. You don't want to throw it long out of bounds. does it all Devonte Graham had to do was touch the basketball and that rolled the clock it's another win in this series for KU they survive on the road 74 71 over Kansas State and the Jayhawks improved to 21 and 3 on the season 9 and 2 in the Big 12 right where they are used to being and that is at the top of the league standing. So we had a terrific big Monday here at Bramlage. Coming up next at Sports Center for Fran Brashilla and Holly Rowe. I'm Bob Bashusen. So long from Manhattan.